silly motherfuckers are eating Rice Cakes or Rice Krispies. Truth is, Rice Krispies aren't that good. I don't want to break it to you. They're fine. I'm a fat kid. I'm going to eat anything. You want the real secret? One, it's animal crackers, but not the dry brown ones. Give me that fake pink shit. And then two, the other secret, my mom used to make them. Dude, no high fructose corn syrup? That's, yeah, that's this is a health food. The frosting, I think they skimped on the frosting. Inflation and margins, I understand. So the frosting got thinner. When I was a kid, these things were thick. And it was like one part cookie to half part frosting, half part frosting. And now it's one part cookie to like one eighth frosting, one eighth frosting. So it's definitely off. And even the sprinkles. If you guys can see, my guy's got like blackheads. Those used to be sprinkle coated like heavily. But again, I understand as a businessman that the margins of these sprinkles are probably astronomical. But back to what really matters. My mom can bake pretty good, but in the winter, she would make frosted flake Rice Krispies, and they make Rice Krispies taste like dirt. Bang, welcome to the video, man. We're gonna talk about diet today as we're eating animal cookies and chocolate. We're gonna answer some of your fat loss questions to kind of close out the shreds phase. Again, if you guys check Monday's video, it's deadlift time. I'm turning heel, we're going monster. I'm a beast, I'm a dog, I'm a motherfucking problem. It's time to deadlift a lifetime PR. And then I'm already lining it up with a top secret coach. I'm gonna get diced up in January. But until then, we're eating muffins, animal cookies, just kidding, I still have baby abs. I'm staying around 200 pounds, so I bloated up, you know, a little bit of carbs. So probably three to five pounds of carbs, and then three to five pounds I gained weight from my shreddedness. Um, but we're still keeping it pretty good. So I'm feeling pretty good, eating a lot of whole foods still, just adding a little bit more carbs. Like I'll have a tortilla with my chicken breast and rice rather than before, I'm just eating cauliflower rice. Um, but everything's good. Today we're gonna answer the last little bit of fat loss questions, then we're gonna dive into more strength stuff as we go. Stay tuned, top secret, you're not allowed to see that but that's coming real soon. I'm gonna catch a pump, it's uh, deadlift day, and then I'll probably bench a little bit. Are we gonna start doing more vlog style videos? I don't know, it seems like the people like it. We got mixed reviews on the 20 minutes, I understand, that's a long time. Some people are like, I ain't got time for that. Some people are like, I love that when I do cardio. But we'll probably try to start to mix in my days a little bit now that they're not as, I mean, they're still boring. But I hear everybody say that, and I always give them a thumbs down, like I shouldn't vlog, even somebody said that. <clears throat> No, but even just like your days aren't boring, you're not boring. But I, I've seen other people say that all over Twitter, like three people in the last week. And so I think, um, yeah, I'll bring, I'll bring the cam home, see what we're into. We obviously got a bunch of travel coming up, so those will be vlogs for sure with some training. Monday, vlog day for sure on the deadlift series, and then Thursdays, and yeah, maybe just a regular lifestyle vlog, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what the mix-up is. Uh, we're gonna talk a little more clothing design as we come into things. Uh, we got some interest on that on Instagram. It's hard to tell, you know, you got the Instagram crowd, and then like the TikTok crowd, and then the YouTube crowd. Some are the same, but they're not always. But there's obviously a lot more comments and interaction on Instagram just because YouTube videos are, go up less often than Instagram content. So it's hard to know what y'all want, but comment below if you guys want to know kind of behind the scenes on the, on the designs and the clothing, what it goes into that, or what's coming with 3SB and good company. But yeah, today we're gonna tug kind of light because we've got a nice heavy day next week. A little bench by a little bench shoulder tricep. And I'm gonna go eat chicken. would you say your diet breaks are? Um, it depends on what you're doing and how much weight you gotta lose. So when I was dropping like 70 pounds, which we overall ended up doing, I would sometimes take like a month or six weeks. Um, now, because I just have totally separate goals, it's gonna be three months. Um, if you just gotta drop 20 pounds, and maybe you're plateaued or you have a vacation, or your mental break, uh, you don't always need a, a, a break, but yeah, you can take a week or two. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It could be, it could be three days. Um, it's kind of for a mental and physical reset. But this one's gonna be about three months. So I can go into a strength block. Uh, one, it's the holidays, so it just plans out right, so I don't want to track the pumpkin pie meeting with my mother on Thanksgiving. Um, and then two, uh, I dieted for like two years on, off and on, so I, I'm gonna give my body a little bit more of a break and my mind. So I'm not gonna track food, I'm gonna focus on whole foods, veggies, whatever, all the same, but I ain't gonna track it. If Chipotle pops up, Chipotle's going down. So yeah, that's the kind of goal for me, but it, it is individual cases, but I think the truth is refeeds and cheat days and. Diet breaks are probably not what you all need because you probably, the truth is, it's not what's stopping your progress. 
being inconsistent and, and eating too much is stopping your progress, not tracking correctly or consistently. top three keys to losing weight? Man, um, that's pretty good because like a lot of folks go into like the X's and O's, like calorie deficit, water, sleep, and like those all matter. But the truth is, is like building habits, which lead to consistency, probably um, tracking food to understand the calories you're eating. And then I would probably say, dude, this is a banger. I don't know if they can hear it, dude. Red Hot Chili Peppers get me going. Bit them on the boat, we can make time. Uh, number three would probably be uh, getting your veggies and fruits in so we focus on health. Not only that, but it also allows us to eat less calories with more voluminous food. So when we're trying to lose weight in terms of dieting, eating those stuff keeps us healthy, keeps some micronutrients, like vitamins, minerals, etc. but also keeps us full. So probably those three if I had to say. Consistency, which is based on habits and routine. Tracking, so we know exactly what's going on so we can be precise in our consistency. And then focusing on whole foods, you know, like whether you're vegan or whatever, I don't care, meats, foods with very few ingredients are gonna be the best bang for your buck, not only in terms of nutrition, keeping you full, but also hitting those consistencies with our tracking. What supplements do you take? Dude, there's so much supplement talk. I was actually thinking about this earlier that, uh, I think it's because I posted our video. So I posted our video on Instagram, obviously we're back in time to fast forward in time for this video, but it was like me with my shirt off or whatever. Every time you see a post like that, on Instagram or social, TikTok, anything, people are selling you something, right? Like, oh, literally 99%. And I think someone made a comment that made me think that, or even our full full day of eating. Like every full day of eating, and no no hate, man, grind out, make your money, cut, but it, you, you look and uh, every time's like, I woke up and I'm like, well, I don't eat. And then I, I'm not sponsored by the protein bar, but I think it tastes good. And then, oh, here's chicken breast. Every single other one's like, I gotta drink these greens and this protein because this gets you jacked. And every time someone's shirtless and like looking jacked, they're literally always gonna be selling you something. I got nothing to sell y'all, man. We, we're not selling you on shit. Right now I'm on zero supplements. I'll take uh, glycerol when I'm bored to get a little pump. Glycerol is just like a supplement that draws some water into your muscles if you got some carbs and you're hydrated. So when you're catching a pump, it feels kind of good. Does it do a ton? Just a little muscle endurance things. It's not terrible. And then I just re-upped on creatine monohydrate, but I haven't taken some for like the last three months because I just didn't buy it. I drank black coffee and then I had a spike. I'm not sponsored by neither of those, but I like caffeine before I train and it helped me work. So I drink coffee while I work. You can call that a supplement, right? To simulate my brain a little bit. And then otherwise I literally just eat. I tweeted about it too. I said, man, I don't know how y'all eat like so much protein powder. Like it's gross. And then people were complaining. The only response is I said, I would much rather eat chicken, fish, milk, anything. And the responses are like money. It's so expensive. I'm like, dude, let me look at y'all's fucking life. Like there's no way you're budgeting so well that you can't buy chicken breast or chicken thigh, which is hella cheap, in bulk from Costco, and you must go dollar for dollar on the protein powder for convenience and price, and then you ain't buying 10 beers every Friday. Like there, you, you're fucking lying. There's not a soul out there that would tell me that. Because if you budgeted so well on everything else in your life, your rent, your cigarettes, your drugs, your whatever that video games, whatever else you're spending, you could easily afford that shit. And I'm not the one to preach this tough guy, financial, you know, look, spend your money how you want, but don't come at me when I say, fuck your protein powder, I like chicken, rice, and food. And then you're like, oh, it sucks, expensive. Like, dude, you ain't spending your money wisely, it's a lot. What do you honestly enjoy? Cutting or being a little fluffy and having like a bunch of strength? I was gonna go for the, uh, wait for a vlog so I get a little more intimate, and we probably will go into it. The kind of mental part of this whole thing and how difficult it is for most people, let alone, I think it's difficult for anybody. Uh, body image and the world we live in and the pressures we go through, the comparison game you get into social media, let alone some folks that do it for a living and are uh, like absorbed by the industry. I'm not saying that we're under more pressure, but in a way we are, but we chose this life, it gets complicated, but emotionally I think it's really tough, um, at least for me, uh, because it, it the pressure to be shredded 24-7 and be the, one of the strongest dudes on the internet. I mean, the fact of the matter is I'm neither. I'm not shredded and I'm not one of the strongest dudes on the internet. But the pressure I feel to chase both of those down, to create the best content, to get the most engagement, to entertain the audience, to almost in a way be something I'm not, 
sits in the back of the head all the time. In terms of what I will we'll vlog more on that another time maybe and I'll be able to express my thoughts a little better. In terms of what I enjoy, I, I think I probably enjoy just either. You know, I, I obviously enjoy really good food and eating pizza and stuff, but I do feel good mentally and physically when I'm a little leaner. Like even right now, I mentioned, you know, I gained about three pounds from just like glycogen stores because my carbs were so low before and then probably another three pounds from just not tracking my calories. So we're up to like 200, 205 pounds where my lowest was like 193, 195 during the cut. So we're definitely gained weight and I'm not as shredded. My veins aren't, you know, my stomach's not as cut, whatever. And mentally still that fucks with me. Although like I'm very healthy and I'm in a very healthy range and to like the normal eye, I'm still like fit, you know, fit. I do like being lean. I like how it feels. Uh, and you guys know I wear 2X shirts. I'm not walking around shirtless. If they, you guys don't know, like what I am on the internet is the same as I am in person. It's not like I put my shirt on to pretend I'm humble on the internet and then I'm in my gym fucking flexing in the mirror all day. Like I fuck around, but I don't. Uh, that's just how I like to wear, but I do physically feel, you know, I, I think when you eat too much, and this is like fact, where you're like, you get too full, you get tired, and you get lethargic, and so like dieting in a sense keeps me in check that way, and so I feel very energized mentally. Physically, yeah, I can't train as hard, but feeling really strong feels good too, man. You know, when I was pulling 700 pounds, and I could pull 500 any second, any day, and make it look like an empty bar, that felt good too, but for some reason, I've never like really wanted to be strong, and, and like we talked about the fulfillment of me in powerlifting, like that's not always what's been in my mind. I, I've never wanted to, I never looked up to the Hulk and I never got inspired by Dragon Ball Z. And I, Arnold Schwarzenegger I think is awesome and cool but he's never been my hero, you know? I, I looked up to Jordan and Kobe and Magic Johnson and Muhammad Ali and some of these guys. So comedians, I looked up to Jim Carrey and Robin Williams and how they spread cheer and entertainment through the world despite fighting their own demons. Like those are the people that I always tried to emulate in my life. Um, my dad, who was always so selfless and loyal to the world, like, happy birthday, it's my dad's birthday, happy birthday to my dad, like, he, you know, like, those are the kind of people that I try to emulate in my life, I've never wanted to be Superman or Wolverine or some shit, I enter I'm entertained by those movies, but that's not what drives me, so, I um, mean, neither is being shredded, to be honest, so, neither, both, I don't know, man, like I've said, like, how you guys wake up and pour a bowl of cereal and, and uh, take a morning dump and take a shower, that's training to me. I wake up and I train. I, I don't get excited for it. I don't dread it. It's just part of what I do daily. We are going to try to make some strides in my strength this next block, and I do have intention and goals with what I do, but it's not what drives my day. It's not. I schedule it in my day at noon every day, just like I schedule my team meetings every Wednesday. Like It's the same thing to me, man, and that's just how I built my life. And I'm not saying it's right, wrong, better, or worse, but that's just kind of how I'm built. Hey, Mikey, yeah. are you on keto? Um, I'm not. That was the other thing when we were talking about diets, everyone just said like, uh, oh, you must be doing carnivore, or you must be doing keto, or you must be, dude, if your diet has a name, they're making money off you. That's just hands down. If your diet strategy, training philosophy, any of these things have a name, it's simply because the person that you're giving money to is making money off. My training philosophy, my diet, nutrition strategies and philosophies don't got a name. I don't own them, I didn't invent them, it's just how things work and the most optimal way to help you. What was your caloric progression through this weight loss? So we talked about a little bit in uh, the longer video, but um, my habits were so poor just because we were building this place construction-wise. I was working 12-hour days, um, plus trying to keep up with everything else, and then eating tons of fast food, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, bad sleep, et cetera, et cetera, drinking alcohol, et cetera, et cetera. So I just tried to chip it away. So first time, I would just try to go, all right, let's eat three square meals. Okay, let's try to get eight hours of sleep. So I'd build these habits over time. So I wasn't tracking at all. And then I just went, all right, I'm gonna go uh, three square meals of whole foods and get two veggies in the day, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I tried to build these habits. And then when I, I started losing weight, obviously, from good, eating McDonald's and drinking Budweiser and bad sleep, now you go to anything. From there, once I would actually like plateau or I felt my progress not being where I wanted, then I started to track every ounce. And then I went from uh, just two basic calories. You don't, you don't have to like cut it every three days. I went 2,000 calories for a while, about a gram of uh, uh, protein per pound of body weight, and then uh, when I wanted to really turn it up, I ended up at 1,500 calories. Uh, but again, that's for me, that's for my lifestyle. I sit at a desk, I sit at my laptop all day, I literally walk less than 99% of you. So that's for me, that's not for you. Uh, it's not gonna kill you or anything, but my calories aren't your calories. I'm 5'10", 220 pounds at the time I was doing that, plus I've lifted weights longer than most of you. Like everything's just so different. So. Um, you can just slowly start to take away calories, track for a while, find out what your maintenance is. It's not that complicated. You use the online calculator. Ladies and gentlemen, 
3sb.co for all your clothing. New drops coming soon. Stay tuned. There are some availabilities. If you guys want some hoodies and the comfiest sweats you ever wear, I promise you, 3sb.co. We over me, Salam Mike. I'm out of here. Be a part of something big in yourself. New videos every Monday, Thursday. We'll catch you in the next one.